Hello everyone and welcome. If there is any problems that you hear my voice, it's okay. I have a little lost buzz. Since we are here, let's start. Let me form the window bigger, if you like. Maybe I can form it here. Oh, that's smaller. Wouldn't matter. So let's get this window bigger. <coughs> Told you, don't worry about my code. I always had this. So let's form to this window. It's beautiful as you see it. Making sure the window is completely insulted. Satisfied. I will still be able to move stuff around from the outside window uh, but I keep a copy of the same file so we'll just open a new one just like this uh, wrong one sorry mm, I'll have to find the file on my own so let's find the folder and begin such an analysis of the ships hmm that folder is not here excuse me I'm hunting a file that has the story part I know I have it here somewhere Here we are. Don't worry about the pictures. I'm trying to design a new rabbit. I'm visualizing a child. Well, a r an adult. I make children animals and adult animals. But I'm mostly a normal person. I just try to find an answer to the young and adult youth. This game is mostly like the danger of the children and danger of the adulthood of their fa family. All children might, well, all the children from the world need their help. Because they could be instincts of their children. So, what's this all mean? It's about the game. Will we save them, or will they die? Sonic will figure that out sooner or later. What does this all mean? And why are there just babies around? Maybe because they came from another world that got destroyed, and they managed to get into the real, the, the other side of the world. All those babies that was from another world has probably entered their world like greed he was one of them they're looking for a new civilization to grow up and learn from another side it's like the story she'll tell so let me find a picture uh, I hate this I don't know where did I put it Here it is, I think. This is it. Mm. I can't find the picture anywhere. This is bad. Very bad. Let me open the window. Maybe I'll find it. Here it is. That's not it. This will take a while, people. Hunting a file means something. Having too much on the screen means a lot. I put it in the picture area. Ah, here it is. I don't want to waste time, so let's begin. 
excuse me. Yes, let's go. A nuisance of the soul energy. We will get to him soon. He is the one that was a mystery from a long ago, locked away in the temple. Yes, it's one of the children's. These animals are mostly children. They are born that way. Why are they babies? Well, because they are locked away in eternal sleep, never to grow up. So, they are called fairies. Until they are released, they can never grow up. This is why greed came to the world. All the young youth was still locked away. What does this mean? Why is it all about the babies? Well, all the children from all from galaxy numbers of symbols of stars were locked away for a long, long time, never to be released. It's like a temple. I can't get out. When will I ever grow up? When will I see a new family? When will I be an adult? so I can be on my own. There we go, people. All the babies were locked away from different kinds of solar systems, never to be found. Right now, on this very Sonic game, they're still there, locked away. One hero came from that star and entered the world of Sonic's planet landed somewhere on the islands or water that was deeply underneath. As soon as he awoke and became something of the world, the f twin rings appeared. It was time to be born once again. The twin rings was never been known until the very day when he became fused with the baby Chaos Emeralds and they appeared before the world because it was time for him to learn so let's start from the beginning you want me to tell you more about him well he's a so fox he is one of the breed fox that was locked away thousands of in billions in zillions of years never to be released or woken he was simply sleeping in an energy course never to be awoken but you can still hear its giggle and laughter to a child or an adult well greed the hedgehog found him and awoken him but there's still the other three animals missing that is in another temple Will Greed the Hedgehog ever find them? Only he has the power to release them by his energy course. One touch the child be awoken only by the soul energy of his body. Greed the Hedgehog. No other Greed the Hedgehog has this power but him. Yes, him. He is the sorceress of the power that came from another world. He was chosen to become one with this and the rest of them. He is the one that's supposed to awaken them. The only one called this character. He is the only one that can awaken them. The him. He is the one that's supposed to waken him, to waken the children of the s temples, and they can finally grow up, never to be locked away ever again. Why was they locked away in a temple? For one purpose, to wait for him. The guardians of the children has, has created soul energy four so energy animals that were born well born and fell asleep never to be awoken until he came as an adult 
He did wander around the area, but never heard them. He couldn't awaken them, because he was too young. His power was weak. It was not enough to to rest rest into the ca the um temple. The energy was not even strong enough to flourish into the into the temple to open the door. So his energy was not as strong as it was, like sparking around him. So he was weak. The temple was not strong enough to hear his call. So it remained asleep. The temples will not of will not appear until he is an adult. The temples are mostly the temple of the forest flower. The forest flower is the temple that can destroy the monster and ravage the ultimate thing that hurts the planet. The Overlord, the King of Darkness Evil. With the Forest Flower, there will be hope once again. But will it be enough to stop him? Ziff and the Overlord, Son and Mother, will find their way into the world of Sonic's planet and finally destroy everything that was on that planet. So now the child from the galaxy has not been born yet. He is two years old. He was three years old. He was three years old when he first arrived on the mystic ruins. Then turned into an animal and became two years old. His number dropped one time down when he became fused and turned into an animal so he is probably two years older than him or one years older than him they were probably both equal numbered but a little further down the road you can say he was the same age as him but he was only probably half age they were not twins they were half age to becoming maybe three but he came three before him as he is but when he turned into an animal he lost one age number and dropped to two and he is older than him a little more than two a little more than three to two so, that's how it works. When he became Fuse, he became a hedgehog and became one years taken away to begin becoming younger. For the other hand of her sister was cursed. She is still out there watching her. She is older as an evil creature, but this is just a curse. The curse what the monster did to him did to her. She is only cursed of his power until he is pushed put away. The curse will never be broken. It's like Sleeping Beauty. When would my curse be broken? So, when would it ever be broken? There is a way to destroy this thing, curse, that curses her. She will not turn back to her original self. She is purely a hedgehog but her skin color will never change until the monster is destroyed she will remain black as she is but the sting on her stomach will be removed if shadow destroys it so her face her color will not change to a, to this kind of color it did appear that she was green once for a second and then the curse released and returned it's like the slime just jumped off her skin and she became green just like him. They are both green. She is lighter green. She is a little darker green than him. She he is lighter green than her. So they both have the same color. But this is hiding her color. Because it's still she is still cursed and her eyes is dark red mostly like an evil creature her eyes supposed to be pink 
cutest of star cutest of a heart and her shoes probably supposed to be light pink red so they're both on an equal side they are both twins and they both belong to each other as family but simply the monster took her from him so let's begin how the story ends and cha cha I will tell you what happened to cha cha <laughs> he appeared into the forest flower and noticing he was just a baby scrubbing over to machines after machines turning him into something of a life form that is that make him the ultimate dancer in the entire galaxy but anybody can take him on but will it be enough to beat him we don't know how strong his dancing moves are he is one of the fastest dancers that knows no bound nothing can stop him that's why the machines turned him into that but it was because a monster was taken over a forest flower planet and destroyed all the children that was about to become the forest flower energy course that can wipe him completely out and his father and mother he went to the planet and destroyed it before he was before they were awoken and tried to go after him he was feared of the forest flower planet he did go on there in fear shaken in fear did he will he beat them or destroy them well he did he did curse them of slime but it was not hurting them they were simply protected it was just like the slime didn't make any effect but but he did jab a poison needle into their bodies and killed them the planet was on fire as he left burning everything f the trees and all forest and all was burning alive on the planet on the other side of the forest planet was being nothing but a wasteland it was burning away and it blew up as he left it and said I will never want to see that planet ever again he almost had me but failed as he left so let's begin shall we the beginning planet of the nurse of Satyrus. Satyrus, the hold of the planet. Satyrus, the planet of Satyrus. Noticing the planet that is mostly big than the other two. This is Vakion, the planet of orcs, of strength. This is Unirus, the planet of healing, a planet of love and prosper. This is Satyrus, the home of the Legion warriors. They are mostly soldiers and protect their children. Their 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 nest is in there with all of their children human and mostly animals yes animal creatures that live in their in the home and walk the streets just like humans they're mostly bound to them but the children were mostly humans and animals trying to become something powerful <laughs> excuse me Vagion was an orc planet, nothing but orc hedgehogs and some humans and Mars. Mostly they were on that planet for a long time, learning from them. Mostly the humans were, were, were the adapt to orcs and humans, mostly together. But they follow, they both leaders of the orcs tribe, they follow them. There were nothing compared to the Satyrus of Satyrus or Unirus. They actually were bound to the planet, a mutating, well, evolving to humans and orcs. Amazing how their planet works in both ways. 
They simply trained and trained to be great warriors, making swords and shields to show that they're very good, and making so much guns that they are ready for war. They do carry their swords and shields if they need them to protect against bullet shots. They make great and powerful armor that comes very large from lava from the volcano and taking the scraps of of strength of ore, building so much armory and so many swords and so many guns as they work <laughs> hard and power they they sweat and burn as the sun burns on the planet they continue to work and work they become great warriors and train with their own army that show them what they are as they move as we move towards the kingdom the king and queen Matthew and Talus Talus Matthew and Talus were both husband and wife they ruled their kingdoms forever teaching of their own tribe but some of the orcs were not happy how they learned their ways some of them were just not right with the planet. Why was the orcs not happy? They wanted to learn more from the other planets. But they didn't even notice they were there. So let's start from the next one. Oh, you want to hear? Yes, they ruled the planet forever, ages and ages, died and made more children becoming great warriors and training so hard to become ultimate legends as they continued to train and trained non-stop did they have free time of course they did with their children as they sit and play with them their children just run and play around their big orc hands some of them just jump on their back and say I love you daddy I will always be with you that's my son. They even tried to teach him the way of strength. Look at me. Show your power. I am strong. You will be like. And the children said, I want to be strong like you. Then follow the orcs war. And train beyond the others. So they did. Even if they children, they worked hard to become something strong of their father. Amazing how their children follow. Their orc tribe had it all. They knew how to work. They had power, everything. They even had lights that they learned how to make out of fire. Simply across their orc tribes, they really knew how to work every children and teach them the ways of strength. Their power was strength and defense. Waking some brutal attacks. Not even Gallius was born as a, as a prince yet. They were not ready to bring him into the world because they... Well, the wife tried to reason with Matthew when will we ever have a child but he simply turned away from her and wa and walked he wasn't ready to do it yet to bring a child into the world he simply went out to lead their army to training them more but she never gave up she continued to try and try and try again we will continue to that one. We move to Unirus, a planet of healing. The planet of Unirus is a mostly delicate planet that has the ways of prosper and peace. They want to have so much peace to bringing peace to all the planets put together. They mostly liked to share their knowledge with other planets share what they got their powers and all but the others didn't seem to be quite 
quite reasonable to their planet. They called them enemies. We are not getting to that yet. Their planet is mostly powers. They wear black robes around their faces and cover their eyes. They walk and pray beyond the healing powers of healings. They make their children learn the ways of healing powers. They even tell them without healing powers you will never revive other people's death. Closely to death you got the power to revive them. But will it be enough to show them? Yes, so they learn everything how to become a great healer that can be mostly supported to the other planets. Maybe making friends to showing them we are friends forever. This is the power of Cabela's heart love. Cabela loves to bring peace and prosper. She has the power of friendship. She wants to be friends with everyone. She wants to bring friends and bring them all together. Enemies or good, bad or good, there is ways that she can change the heart of bad and evil. She has a power to sharing love to others. Amazing how she uses it. This is Cabela's homeland. She lives there. But she hasn't been born yet. There are two. King and Queen. The King is Justin. The Queen is the one of only flower delicate and love a great girl that have so much delicacy and mostly the power of love Lillian Lillian a great girl that has so much knowledge and shares every truthful friendship to all teaching them the right ways to fighting and showing them the ways to being a great leader and bringing peace to all planets and sharing the knowledge and helping others that is a planet that will never be destroyed with love it's mostly helps the other planets this is a special planet that will help the others and bring peace to all to be coming together Uterus is a planet that it mostly that can bring peace to all but some say they mostly have rumors of it destroying other planets but is that true or is it just a lie to putting a war against them? I believe it's a lie. They never want to destroy other planets. Somebody put it up to them. So they brought war to them. Now, Satyrus. Satyrus is a place for galaxy heroes. Or warriors, the strongest planet in the other two. Their planet is mostly the strongest, strongest that mostly has the will of acceleration and showing the speed of others. Their critical damages are very strong against the orc tribes. They even train hard to to bring the defense to them, to showing them that we are stronger than them. But some say the orcs managed to get into their planet and try to destroy all their children and people. They mostly did lose. They mostly lost a hundred babies. The orcs struck them down, and some of their babies were captured, and they were they were prisoners of their planet. Mostly became one of their own trappers. 
Yep, shepherds. Maybe that's why those there's humans on that planet that came from their planet that they didn't know their mothers are still on it. The orcs do watch them to make sure they don't do anything funny. They are still prisoners underneath the orc's power. As they grow, they lock their babies. They lock the babies in chains. They do feed them and do change them once of a while. However, they cry. They lock the doors in front of them because they are prisoners. Don't need to be completely con completely taken care of. But if they do get sick, they have no choice but to take care of them fully as their own babies. These are brutal orcs will do anything to take them from them. Sadly, see that happen to Satyrus. <laughs> so anyway, Satyrus had a power. They wouldn't steal any children from them. They would just conquer their lands and tell them that we owned you. Was that true? No. They wouldn't set a foot on their planet. They would just wage war outside of their kingdom and try to lose, use them as prisoners. They would try to capture their orc tribes and try to tell them to make a trade. Their children for their people. You think the orcs will want them back? Yes, they do. They will not want their tribes to be punished. So they did make a trade. Constantly. And constantly again they fought and tried to take their children away from them. But the time was coming as the war continued the or the galaxy heroes wore mask clothes armory they had so much power of future armor that there's mostly wheel that can block those attacks against the orc tribes weapons they had ex <coughs> I need some water <laughs> I can go on. They had so much armor and weapons that they knew what to do with them. How much weapons they hold is much really over them. Satyrus would never give up the war against them. Satyrus waged war against them so much and they did too. What's, who started the war? Well, the orcs started the war against the satyrs first. And satyrs went back after them. Such things how started. Unirus couldn't do anything but watch. They tried to reason with them both. But they would not. Conde. So they became targets as well. So they had no choice. They all waged war. Satyrs has a beautiful kingdom that is mostly white and blue this planet is blue the planet is just like planet earth but way beautiful it glitters every time the rings move the rings are mostly um, gas that keeps the planet flourish the gas is supposed to protect the rings protect the planet why would we have gas rings well the gas rings are meant to protect the planet from being attacked by meteors and all. The rings are protection rings that protect the planet from being destroyed or falling into the sun. The rings will move the planet to a different direction away from the sun. These rings are very special. One of them being removed will be just like Saturn. It can't defend itself. Its gravity is mostly strong against powerful attacks. The orc planet is mostly strong as well, that holds rocks that protect their planet from meteors. They mostly get hit by them sometimes. The meteors sometimes hit their planet, but don't make any damage because the planet is very big and it hits the craters or mountains. 
universe. It has this very wield of energy. Unus Ring has a power to protect its planet from meters and other things that attack their planet. Unus has a delicate gravity that can make the meteor go down, like down, like that. If the meteor hit the planet, it will probably not make that severe damage. But if the meteor hits the comes towards the planet, it will slow down and go down like that. For Saturn, if the meteor hit their planet, it would just bounce away like that. The ring will move and hit and bounce away. For the Orc meteors, sometimes they get hit by the rocks. Sometimes the meteor hits the other rocks around. They move around slowly. But if they don't make the target around the Orc's planet, they will get destroyed. But orcs managed to protect. Orcs managed to learn those meteor attacks, so they moved their homeland somewhere else, or tried to get hit and tried to survive. Mostly, the orc tribes can hide their children underground of the rocks, protecting them from meteors. This planet has took so much damage, but it's still alive. It's never died because the orcs take care of it and make sure that planet is nice and furious exactly like the other planets they knew how to protect their planets and how to keep it clean their planets of Saturn has so much armies that walk the planet they simply march with hundreds of armies and some children just playing in the playgrounds having so much fun is just lovely Their people knew how to how to walk and share their own knowledge with their other children. They had army tanks and all, future tanks that can wipe enemies if they try to land on their planet. Bad code today. The sun rays knows how to protect their plant, but sometimes they are not resistant to the sun rays against this. <coughs> but hmm, they mostly need the sun rays to keep the planet going. Why is the planets are close to the sun? It's because their planet is so flourished, and it needs so much sun to keep it from freezing. Their planets can freeze so quickly, it will turn everyone to the Ice Age. That's why the planets are closely. But don't worry, nothing will harm the planets because they have protection. The Orcs planets is a little way off, just word from the Earth planet is on the same limit. This planet doesn't need the sun, it just needs to be a little close to it. So it's protected from that area. But these two need to be close to the sun, even how the lava is going. It needs to be close to the planet to keep it alive. The planet can really catch very cold numbers. Sometimes the planets usually go a little bit back because it, summer is coming and the planets turn to ice. Well, it starts to snow, just like snowfall. If the planet was over here, the planet would be just like ice. This planet can really freeze. Really, they both can freeze to ice and kill everyone on that site. So that's why these planets are close to the sun. This is Delpha Sun 2. That's the name of it. Delpha Sun 2. Delpha Sun 2. This sun has so much so much ore, so much things in it, and you know what? This sun has so much gold that sparkles on the sunshine. No one can get into the sun if they had str if they were so much experience to gravity, so much gold, they'll probably die on that planet if they try to get close to it. Leave the gold alone on the sun, cause you will burn if you do. <laughs> They can make you rich beyond your wildest dreams. They can help the planet. 
So anyway, their armies marched and marched, protecting their children. Some children were moved to the pods to be upgraded. <laughs> now, I will not talk about that yet, but let's start with the war before we move on. As the armies decided to start war, they simply wasn't getting along, so they both, all three of them, fought for the ages after ages. Their war lasted for 25 years. As the prince died, and well, 25 years, the king was still around. The prince was still around. I'm talking about something else, sorry. There was no prince at the time. 25 years the war ended. Well, the 27th war, 27th day, the war ended. It was not much time for the hap There was 27 years the wife was tr begging for a child. But time was running out. He only had one day left to have that child. Or greed would never be born. At the 27th day, the war ended. They brought peace before the land and became friends for all eternity. The war was, that was the last war they ever had. There were two wars for the 17th day and from there to 27th day. The war ended from those two points. And this time, it's completely shut down. But, ooh, excuse me. It was time on the 27th day to bring the children into the world. The children was about to be born. He was already around, but he became born before them. Baby Commander Shorts, let's go by him, was on the Satyrus planet. Would you imagine a baby can talk in Satyrus planet at the age of his age? Up one, maybe two and a half. He can speak beyond the people's words and clear up numbers. What is the spirit? Why was the baby can talk? The planet of youth was not here. The planet of youth is out there somewhere. It is a place where babies can talk at any kind of age to an adult age. The babies were transferred to Saturn because something was going to happen. Another war was going to strike on that area. Or something was going to happen. Someone had a dream. Or something was going to happen to that planet of young youth. The baby was transferred to the queen. And told the, qu the queen had some resolved issues. How could you talk at this age? The baby told them. Things was happening good. The baby was sent into a pod they become something great he didn't want to go he was just simply crying behind the glass thing where she put them in there and said I don't want to be something he continued to cry and cry and cry saying I don't want to be strong I want to be a well the Queen has said you are chosen to go somewhere and I'm sending you to the other side of this world and as that time came, the baby couldn't do anything. He simply fell asleep and started to grow. Years after years. Well, we'll start with that. He went into... Commander Shirt was created and... Well, let's see. Baby Greed was born. Baby, bo baby Cuddles was born. The child of Satyrus. 
the one supposed to save the world on the other side. For Commander Shorts was growing for longer before he did. He was older than Greed. He was mostly an adult and transferred to a new world, as the Queen says, be careful. There was more to this story about him. Commander Shorts had a word that why did I have to become this person to you? Why do I have this, f this feeling that something will happen to your kingdom? The Queen told him, I have nothing to live for. The answers will be clear. The child will be transferred to the other side of your world. Please be haste and watch over him. As he saluted to Ch as she saluted to well, as he saluted to the queen, I will follow your orders and take them all in proudly. I will probably will never see you again, would I? The queen said, I probably guess you would never see me again. But take haste. We will never see you will never see this planet or any galaxy like this ever again. Your new home will be on the other side. Commander Shirts turned bowed his head and cried. Does this mean it's over? I'm free and you're gonna lose? The Queen said I have nothing to live for left. I believe the end is coming for me. My child has been born. He is cute. Yes, he is. He's a newborn. And who is that's the one? You will see him sooner or later. Be careful, Commander Shores. Be a great soldier and protect the other side of the planet. Somebody will come up your way and say thank you. And you will thank someone as well on the other side. Please do not enter their planet until the time is right before you hear the sound of a new child on the planet. It will come to your eyes when you see it. So he took the words and left. I promise to follow. So he left the world on his way to the new world, but not noticing the Max was on his tail. Finding out there was something not right, the Max was attacking his ship. So the Max, so the so the commander shirts has destroyed, went back at, turned around and attacked their ships. What a craze of blast, wiping out the army. But there were still more of the Max. Not far from commander shirts traveling to the new world trying to enter a portal to the other side. Commander Shirts found another ship that was already being taken over by the Max. Commander Shorts has jumped on the ship and attacked the orders of the Max. Finding out there was people on this ship being slaves of the tribes. Not noticing that he came across the baby. the king of another planet not far from the not far from Satyrus the planet of youth the king was the baby was a king or a prince his mother and father was captured by the Max and he couldn't do nothing about it so he told them told him I'm all alone and I'm I'm running the ship on my own and I need your help. Whoever you are stepped forward and said, I am Commander Shorts. I am from the planet of the young youth. And speechless to notice the king has said, I'm from the young youth planet as well. And the and Commander Shirts wanted to know what happened to the young youth of planet. And said something devastation has happened to the planet. A war was going on. And wondering who was starting the war. I don't he said, I don't know what happened. We have managed to get away from the planet when it got blown up. 
all he, he could say there were men of some sort of planet of the mechs. The mechs attacked and destroyed the planet. Everything was on it was children and people wandering and walking. They were all killed by the mechs. <laughs> Commander Shirts put his head down and started to put his face to, to the side of the wall and said, I can't believe it. All of it's gone. My mother and father destroyed. He cried in the room. Simply a lot of tears fell from his eyes as he standed up and placed flowers beyond the grave of the skies. He, f he drew flowers into the sky and said farewell. Goodbye, mother and father. The Max has actually followed them to another world. They started talking about the planet and everything where he came from and how it was he was captured. The king has ordered him to join his crew and follow out his missions. Her, his missions. The commander sure said he had a mission. He has to find a way to watch over a child until he grows up and be on his own. The king has ordered him to f to tell him. The king has ordered him to find his mother and father. That is his mission. He, he gave him. But Commander Schultz has said, "I will take your mission to find your father or mother. The only way we can find them if we lurch the mechs to us. But there is no mechs out here, so they left to the new world." And they talked about everything. <laughs> how it was so cool to talk as a baby. That's how he said. That's how the world was. But you still had the power that you were on that planet. It's still taking effect of you. He, the boy, the child said, I can talk as a baby because I was born on the planet of youth. And I would flourish with the smell of the planet. There is no way I can become a full baby without stop talking so he told him the king the uh, commander shorts told the king do not enter the planet earth because then you'll be a new species of their planet he followed or commander shorts orders and he did say maybe this will be right I will not want to see the people take me into examining my blood and everything and saying you are something new to this world that we want to find how did you how did a baby talk at this age for now on the other side of this they made it he was a new species of the world of the other side but from the other side where he came from he is not <laughs> so as they waited we go back to the other planets Satyrus had a wonderful thing. What can we find on the planet of Earth? Satyrus had a thing about something. There is no bound to this thing, but yeah. As the war waged, as the war, as they thought of something, the child of greed was born. The child of Gallius was born. The child of Cabela was born. The child of baby Jezebel was born. Well, cuddles. There were three babies were born in the planets. Not knowing that something was going to happen as they grew. 
something came to the planet of Satyrus, traveling like this around the planet, stopping at the sun and going back. What was that? It was the planet of darkness. Darkness of the darkness slime. The drops from the planet of goo. There is nothing in that planet but evil. Where did it come from? And how did it get there? It came back every year, traveling around the sun. It has never been there. It is, we have never known that it come here so quickly. Why did it come here? Saturn's had a feeling something was on that planet. As they viewed it, and as it came high and left. They didn't see it. This did only see it that it was traveling around. It was a planet that can bring evil to the other side of this planet. Sonic's planet. A dark, flourish planet. Why? Yes, a dark planet of evil. Why did it come to this planet? And why is it so bound to this world? <coughs> oh, yes. Anyway. So, um, the king and the king has left the Saturn's planet and took his child with him. Well, left the child. He has traveled to the dark planet and numbers to find out what's on the planet. He found nothing but dark slime and goo that he couldn't imagine if he stepped on it. One of his soldiers has turned into a monster when he stepped into the slime puddle. It wouldn't even matter if he felt it on his shoe. It actually crawled up his skins and turned him into a monster. And that monster tried to attack them. The people fired at him and killed him. And he fell on the floor and the slime died. The soldiers were speechless. What is this thing can do? They took samples of it and left the planet of slime. Went back to Sadrus and found something of this thing. They can make them rich of their wildest dreams. So they took the slime and sold it to others. How? What will happen if they use the slime? Well, the slime was made from gold. Black flourish of slime. Saturn had a planet that can make them rich and rich beyond the other planets' dreams as they give them profits for it. So they did. Other planets from Kegia came to their planet for it. Unirus came to their planet for it. Other planets from the other galaxies came from it. Wanted the slime from the planet. And they all talked about it. This planet has some secrets that we can use. So they did. After countless time they used the slime. But something from another planet. Something happened to one of the soldiers. And it turned to, to a monster. And he was corrated. Ziff. Well, this is his name. He was born.
Why did Ziff become born? Because people were going crazy and the slime actually spilled on one of the people. One of the delicate kings of another galaxy of Unirus got the slime and attacked Cyrus. The monster could not be stopped. It was completely getting stronger. So the people grabbed the creature and tried to tie him up. The monster spoke to them and said, You can't help hold me. I will come after you all. This is my homeland. I am taking it all from you. So he had grief to taking everything from them. He said you should have never played with my slime. This is what happens when you touch something that doesn't belong to you. It was simply a monster that meant, no, meant something about the planet. Slime. The people said you should have never brought your planet to us. That's what planets do. They move around. They have to move. You should have left it alone. Well, the planet was no ordinary. Some say this planet attacked the other planets and dropped their slime on their planets. If it, l if this planet was going course around here to the sun, this planet was planning to go to the top of Saturn. And you know what happened if he, if it went to the top of Saturn? Slime will drop from the planet, poisoning the rest of the people <gasps> oh shoot the sli yes the slime drops the planet slime can drop slime from its planet and it will drop into the planet even passing the gravity falling on the people as they turn into creatures that was like the planet was a planning to the slime planet was planning to destroy the other planets it's like it had a brain of its own Amazing for a planet of slime. <laughs> yes. So anyway. The monster was held. His brother came forth and said, I will take this creature into me. This fought his... His brother took the monster and beat him to the inch of his life. Saying, destroying our people is not yours. The monster was sent back to the planet of slime and placed on the cursed tree but the thing is the, he was destroyed and placed with cards and Strabo and said I will come back for you I will destroy all your people so he did he went back to another planet he went to the orcs planet and attacked them how did the monster get free from the, from the planet of this tree the seed of the planet of the healing planet was weak. It was not strong enough to hold him. He got away and broke free and attacked. Kakia and the orcs tried to stop it. it was, they were becoming monsters of them. As it spread, they fought them off and came to the king of Sadras and said, This monster that you have was attacking us. They both came to the monster and the f um, his brother took the monster back in and this time this time he attacked so many people it came to his order to place him somewhere back on the tree but the thing is the monster didn't stop he got away again and this time he went to Unirus and attacked the Unirus planet and turned them, some of their people into monsters like him. But the thing is, why didn't the slime planet leave? Because it's in a war. So all of them ra wage war again against each other. And this time, the monster was continuing to make war against each other, not touching their people. Just starting a war as a different person, Slime. And the people found out that the monster was still around. They captured him. And this time, 
The king held him, and the brother said, I want that monster. I'll place him back on a tree and will not let him go this time. The king had no choice and said, I will place him on a tree. I have something stronger in mind for him. So the king and took and the mother said, I can't be here for this planet for this time. I'm heading to the planet of Kakia and try to to explain to the to the Kakia people and try to make peace to them again. So she did. And her husband left to the planet of slime. They both left at the same time. <laughs> you getting this, people? We're not done. The monster was was tied up and walked behind him. The king placed him on a tree while the baby was in a bed asleep. Innocent, defenseless, had nothing they can do to defend himself underneath the slime planet but protected by soldiers in a room inside the building away from the slime planet well on the slime planet a creepy place for a baby not to be on a slime planet is not a place for a child to be but he had no choice but to take him with him there was no guards gonna protect him at this moment they had other things up their hands trying to Calm down the planets. They're about to wage war on Saturn as teammates. Oh shoot. All the soldiers has left and tried to wage with them. And they did. They calmed them down. As the, as the kings placed cards on him. Um, sword daggers on him. He even struck a sword on his back and said, I will get you for and he said, I will get you for this. It's not over. I will swear I will kill you and your child. The king said, My child doesn't need to be attacked. He has nothing against you. He is innocent and weak. He has nothing to hurt you with. He is defenseless before you. He is weak. You have nothing against him. Only I and the rest of the people. And the monster said it wouldn't matter. He is a target because he's your blood. His eyes opened and said. He even said to the king, I even destroyed your father. I went to the room and they, you know, and found that he was in there. He knocked on the door, and I opened the door and grabbed him. And, said, uh -huh. and the king said, what did you do to him? I broke his neck. Uh -huh. Whoa. Dang. The king put his head on the floor as the soldier said, King, don't put your head down. That's only showing mercy to the enemy. That's showing them you're weak. And the king said, silence. Shut up. He put his head up and he said, You disgusting creature. Well, you stupid monster. Oh. Well, crazy monster. And put the last dagger through his mouth. And he was cursed as a doll. And he placed curse cards on him. And said, let me light up a card for him. We light up a card for you. As his brother came to the cage and s placed the cards on him. And the marshal was still looking. Because he looked at the brother and saw cards. <laughs> flipped at his face. <laughs> all over his body. Now marshal knew it will be his turn to play cards with him. The king said, it's time to destroy this planet and wipe it out. <laughs> they were going to do that in about 30 days. That's when the planets were calmed down. You know what happened next? Another, 
up girl coming from another planet traveling to planet Satyrus and she offered up a new creature from another world a rabbit that she has in her hand a delicate rabbit they haven't seen before there was no rabbits on their planet she was about to get the gift from the king saying you should stay here for a minute you're gonna be somebody of the world I will branch you something great that you can be on your way home with it please share more moments to where did you find these things she told them but there were two greedy boys that came from the school with her was not happy that she had something great that they wanted they were simply going e oh man that's when they found out a map was in the room of the king's court they were planning to change the words around that he she was going to be the greatest trying to plan something to the girl trying to put her in trouble but there was nothing in the king's room that they can put her in trouble with but a map <laughs> it was the map to the slime planet So, the peep, the two boys went to the slime planet. Amazing, as they walked into a scary woods of slime, they looked around and saw fear before their eyes scared as they trembled and tried to walk and tried to find something that they can get on her and guess what they found the monster placed on the tree with cards and everything and they all screamed ah, a monster and they said wait look he's been cursed and they said there's nothing to be afraid of this monster can't touch us and we can't be cursed by him they even touched him he was simply nothing gonna hurt them they even slapped his face <laughs> and they heard him voiced out <sighs> but you know what happened they said oh he's still alive he's still breathing and they said that's good as long as we can get out of here, I had enough of this. Imaginable. <laughs> Amazingable. Something came over their heads saying, Maybe we can use this slime. But something happened before their eyes. The monster actually melted away on the floor as the cursed swords fell to the ground and the cars just flied and fell to the ground and they said things just melted away what is that creature so they took us and they said wait let me take a sample of this maybe we can use it to put, to give the rabbit a good bath <laughs> So they did. They took the sample of the slime and left the planet back to Satyrus. Back into the courtroom, they went into the hallway and they found the rabbit that the king had in his bedroom. They put slime on him and they said, drink up. I hope you have a good shower. And they left the room as they laughed and giggled. But something happened to the rabbit. He was simply mutated into a creature. <coughs> into a monster. Called Ziff again. He attacked the planet and destroyed everyone in his way. He looked at the king and said. <gasps> the king with his eyes open and said. Oh. And the monster said, King, 
I will be back. He flew into the sky and vanished. He went so far away like this. For a fast speeding lightning into space, attacking the first planet of their country. The king was scared and hostless. Something was coming over him and found that who did this to this rabbit? No more. Disappeared. Gone. His true thing that he could have made the world even greater than it was before. The rabbit delicate was no more. That he loved so much he even made friends with it. It made him so mad that he smashed the door open and went to the courtroom and said who did this to the rabbit? The people were scared. The king was really enraged of heat. They all hid behind the doors and the two boys simply hid behind the girl. <laughs> and the king looked at her and said, Did you do this? I thought you wanted me to have the gift. And the, and the girl said, I didn't do this. I was not the one who made this thing on you. You know what you did? That was slime you put on him. Where did you get the slime? <gasps> Wait. And uh, someone said the slime was from another planet. And he said they even took samples of it. It's the creature from the one from the tree. You, you know, and he said, you know what you just did? You released the creature from the from the slime planet. Now he's in space planning to destroy us all. And he growing as we speak. As he dropped the thing on the floor. I know you did this. Speak now. The king said to her. I didn't do it. And the other people said, those greedy boys, yes, she did. She the one who placed the slime on the rabbit and sent your little rabbit to die. I even have this that she had in her pocket. <gasps> the map. The map to the slime planet. You stole it from me. See, she is the one who did it. Why? We trusted you. All the people were mad at her. And they did what they had to do. Sentence her to death. They did away with her one day ago. And she was dead. They killed her. The innocent girl didn't do anything. The two boys were absolutely crying because they did something wrong they was not supposed to. They were crying over grief that they finally got rid of something they, they they will never mess with them again. They didn't like her. They wanted her dead. So they did. They got what they want. But it wasn't over. The monster was attacking the planet of the forest planet that can destroy him. He wiped all the children on that planet that he was feared of. That was his first target. That's when Chacha came that I told you about and became something and left back to the other world. The king was speechless that they said one of the planets was destroyed. The, the forest flower planet. Why did he target that planet? And that's when she came. Old Amy. You are the one I've been searching for. Time is on an essence. The child of greed. And, and they said, who is she? What is she? Who is this woman? A creature! A hedgehog! said you're one of the orcs tribes what are you doing here and she said I'm not from the orcs tribe I'm from another time that could make your planet still live 
and how could you make our planet live? As they said the words to her, they tried to reason and say she tried to reason to them and say the planet you're in and everything can end up if you don't get the child off this planet. The monster will destroy your babies and destroy them all. But some of your children will never make it to the other world. And she said, What other world? There is no other world out there. She said, Yes, there is a world out there. She said, Planet Earth. <laughs> she said, Take heed. The one, there will be only three or four babies will arrive on that planet safely and start their new arising. The king was scared and said, "Who? How do you know all of this? What are you, a witch?" She said, "No, I am a person of a messenger that came from another planet. That." was destroyed right now. The monster destroyed everything that's out there that could destroy your child, including this one that you love so much. Stay away from him. She showed a mirror of another child like him. <laughs> My son! What is this pokey pokey? She said, he said, that is your son on the other side of the time. Look what happens to him. <gasps> My son, he's being eaten by a creature. Not only that, <gasps> that thing out there is going to kill him. Sire. This is a trick, is it? No, I'm seeing it from my eyes. My son being devoured by him. Queen. Even my... Hey, look. I'm coming the right time. <gasps> my son. The orcs actually saw his son being destroyed by dark shadows. Oh, that's my son? That is your son that's being destroyed by shadows. He, his name is Gallius. <gasps> no, my son's right here. <sighs> then came the healers to see their future. Cabela. No. She's being devoured by slime. This is no trick. Who are you and how do you know all of this? I am from the future. The future? King, this is all a trick. And then came... Jezebel's future. That's my daughter. But she's still alive, is she? No, right at this moment, she's one of them. It's too late for her. She's already been taken over. No. My daughter! Old Amy showed them the future, what would happen. So they all followed her orders to let the children go. And she said that girl that was the one of them was not the one supposed to be punished. The two boys that left the planet was the target that did this to that did all of this. The two boys has escaped, but they were not that far from death. <laughs> the world, I finally got what I wanted from the king. The priceless jewels. What the? <laughs> they got killed by the monster. 
At this moment, they are being destroyed. S good riddance to them. And they stole my priceless jewels. What have I done? I killed an innocent person. You had no reason to do that. You didn't know. It was not your fault. But I feel that it's my fault. It isn't, King. So as they learned and found the way to get their children off the world, try to, there was something going on in the lab down the lane. The baby was chosen from the holy lands of light. The king took the baby to the holy temple. And the temple, swords and all, everything that's gold and shiny, there were swordsmen Samurais, people, holding their swords up, and one sword, one metal swordsman, glitched his eyes at the child as he turned his eyes at it, and the soldier just smiled with a grin and happiness. He put up his sword at the child and said, "Chosen one." and pointed the sword at him and he melted away as the sword dropped <sighs> he was one of the souls that lived in the temple of light waiting for the chosen one to come <sighs> how long they been there the child was sent to the holy light by the king to give them the chance to get them over there the monster was so far away from the temple. His target was the other temple of light. The monster has taken over the temple of light on the other side of the, on the other side of further down of this planet. He has taken the light temple was supposed to be for Jezebel. <gasps> what? You mean Jezebel had a light temple? Well, yes, she did too. Only one child can be granted light powers and the temple will turn to stone. So the temple of light was taken over. The temple of light was a guy that was taken over and destroyed. Wait, it was a woman. She was she died in the temple and became stone as the monster fledged its poison and turned it into a dark temple. But the other temple of light where greed was at. The true, the, f the monks that asked for the king for, for saving their lives Grant asked them for grant for gift to them to gift to a gift to the child. This is the thing why does he know about light powers? He was weak, he had nothing. The child was sent to the holy light. The king has said, Please watch him at with all your might. Don't let him go. Bring him safely back to me. And the monk said, We will. We promise we will watch over him with all of our might and protect him. So they did and left to the holy light. The temple was big as the door opened in front of them. Like I said, the soldier melted away and smiled and said, Chosen One. The other temple, or the other soldiers were actually broken. Only one soldier looked at him and smiled. There were books of praises everywhere. The temple was shining with gold, stronger than ever, waiting for the chosen one to be granted with all their power from the temple. Noticing the the temple was actually shining from for the floor. The child couldn't see anything. It was totally light in front of him. So bright until he was placed 
on the water. The water was surrounding around him. Around his feet, he could he could stand. It held his feet up. And the church started to talk to him. Chosen one. You are the one we've been searching for. I am Gracie, the Temple of Light. You are him, the lucky child of the Light Temple. I am Kirkery, the Light Temple of Gods. I want you to step forward. The water held his feet up as he walked towards the top. Appeared an angel appeared before him and had his hands closed and said so you're the one we've been looking for and he sees his little child one of a beautiful good boy how pretty you are with great power you have nothing inside of you you're simply empty weak have nothing to defend yourself. I will grant you my powers, all of it, and you will use it to protect the world with it. I grant you this power of light. Please be one with it. And the temple filled the whole entire light and filled the entire room with gold, and it went inside his body. Directly to his heart, entire body, giving him strength and power. Something appeared from his head. A little dot appeared from his head, like he has. It was glowing and brightly, it was turning yellow. It was turning like this. It was like a dot. It turned like this. A little tiny dot on his head. The dot was growing bigger and bigger until it turned into a halo. He was screaming in, pa screaming in pain that it was getting stronger every time. But he wasn't in pain. He just felt that he was in pain. The halo turned. His eyes started to change. And then his back started to hurt and scratch. He was scratching his back. Something was coming from his back. It was starting to make bumps as it tried to come out. Wings sprouted behind his back. And he screamed in pain, that one. And child, it's okay. This is your power. And blood just fell over the floor as it sprouted and sprouted tried to shake off the blood of its wings and all of a sudden the dot the halo turned back to a dot and then it disappeared and its wings has disappeared as well but they are there invisible and these are as well and that's why You can't see that. You can't see it. You can't see his wings because they're invisible. You get what I'm telling you? His wings are invisible to him. What hides his wings is his hair. Even if he moved his hair, his wings will not show. It will only show when he releases his light powers. Even if he's a baby or an adult. He has so much smile and joyful that he's so happy.
That is the power of light that makes him have so much joy and press work. It makes him so happy that he just so lovable. Even this one. Whatever sadness that comes from him breaks his heart like the power of God. Whatever makes him sad and forces what picks on him, he starts to cry. He has so much happiness and sadness. Just like light has sadness, wants to help somebody. I want to help you, but you don't want me to let you, you don't want to let me in and help you. That is the light what's calling him. Calling them. So that's why he was granted with the light powers. He has become joyful and happy once the light was in him. After the light filled his entire body, the angel died and, said, oh, and fell to the ground. His eyes opened and disappeared as glitter fell from the floor into the sky. The temple just turned to stone like a rock. And the monks carried the light child baby as he glu glowed like a shiny yellow dot. Like this. He glowed. Drew out his adventures back home. Once he returned home, the glowing light disappeared. And he was back to normal. But that was not normal. It was just hiding it from others. He, at that moment, every time he went to bed, shadows tried to engulf him with darkness. He was afraid of the darkness now. But everybody comes to the darkness and tries to put the light on for him. to try to keep that darkness away from him and the shadows just disappear that's why the shadows is after him they want to kill him he is something special to the other side that they want so much everyone wants his powers and use it against evil or good you get it so after the monster destroyed all the planets, he came to the Temple of Light where he came from. It was simply the stone. He couldn't do anything to it. It had nothing in it. And he couldn't find anything in it. There was nothing in it. It was simply too late. The monster was too late to, to destroy him. And he knew. He said, it's t he, he was chosen. He's been come one. No, I was too late. <sniffs> but it's not over. I'm still coming for you, King, and your baby. That is the chosen one. So he came after the last three, two planets, three planets. And Jezebel followed that he was taken over. As the moments of the time when he tried to get to the planet, the king was preparing ceremony of a payment to the other prophets. He used all his money to build an mega life form. All the other children were in a, was in a pod of an ultimate life form. The child was placed in a pod that was strapped to wires inside the pod had so much wires around him under him on his carriage on his hands 
every single body part that needs to strengthen every part of him every piece was injected with billions of wires that can continue to go like this and continuing the like wires continuing to spread all over him he was completely scrambled with wires nothing even his face and eyes ears mouth tongue all the way into his body parts wow he was jacked up with wires the pod was simply in the room of the king's bedroom the other pod was in the shelter room where all the children were becoming ultimate life form that could be one day destroy him but they failed but this child made it this is the pod that made him the mega life form transverse after the machine set its final course a hundred percent mega life form has been created opening pod releasing cable wires ouch that must hurt as it took it out of him and his mouth everywhere there was no scratch on him not even blood it was simply attached that's it the baby woke up in a crying mood but the thing is the king felt him he was heavy he had to carry he was like a heavy as a rock because he was a mega life form he was ready to be transferred to the new world sorry Gali has already been left one year ago Cabela was about to leave exactly where Greed was leaving. They both planned it out and left together. The monster headed towards the planet. He destroyed He destroyed Oh no, yes. Excuse me. He destroyed Kekia no more but the child has already left all their people was no more next was his target was Unirus but the baby left not that long ago he they destroyed all the children's well the children's were actually not there he couldn't find anything but it wasn't not what he wanted he knew that he would get them in time so he destroyed the planet and all the people tried to fight him exactly as they tried to they were all killed no more the last planet was his primary target the king Jeff Robe he killed the queen Poor woman and the last target was his son and uh, all the other children's has left but the son his son was still there he was trying to spare time for the children to get away to reach the other side of the world but it didn't stop him they were both facing down at each other saying this is it king prepare to die the king had one final shot to get away he did he managed to escape by using the stone that Amy gave her gave him the thing actually teleported and they both on the same line Cabela and 
Greed. Cabela and Greed were on the same line. And the monster just destroyed the planet. Just damaged the planet. He couldn't destroy it completely because he was not in the time warp yet. He was not time. He didn't have enough time to, to make that attack. So he left and tried to catch them. Somewhere in space, they were both trying to get away. Not that far from Cabela. The monster found the children and turned them into monsters. Amazing, all the children that tried to get close to the, to the other side failed. And the universe people and orcs died. Only four survived. If you heard about the story of the journal, if you heard about it, it's all here. The rest of the parts. How it's supposed to how they're supposed to face down. Just go here. Just go here, see my address right here, go here, and you can finish reading the story. It's down here on the probably on the first page or the second. I easily go this way. You probably have to find it on the second page. <laughs> no, not this one. No, that's not the one. We gotta go to the second page. Well, you can do it this way. You can click on this name. You can just click on the journal here. Well, that's the wrong one. Sorry. We'll just click on... Uh, just click on this journal here. And it'll take you to my journal. Just look for this one. This one right here. Yeah, this is it. If it's the long one, let me see. Um, yeah, this is it. Just look for this address here. If you'd like to stop the video and copy this, go here. Okay. Since we got that out of the way, let's go back to the pictures and start talking about more. Starting to get interesting to you people? This is the beginning I'm talking about. I can only knew I'm only doing Jeff Rhodes part. The next part will be some other time. I'm trying to get to the part of the king. And from there where Sonic met him. Hmm. Hmm. Here we are. Oh, here. You know this pod? It was actually actually um, the king has attached this pod to his ship and carried it with him into space. <laughs> he took the pod into space and the monster appeared at a ship and found the king. If you heard about that part, yeah, already it's on the book. Skip this part. As the as the Kenji arrived and found out that the there was something wrong in space, they looked through the telescope and found there was war going up there. Kenji found out the baby was bouncing up and down on the bed. Strange. She was in a dream, trying to save his friend, Baby Greed, Cabela. But noticing... Why was Cabela still on that world? Well, Kenji was about to send the baby off into the new world. Because there could be some help, that th something that will happen on that world. The baby was transferred to a new world. Well, someone went took her with him. Wait, that's how it went. 
The baby t used a teleportation stone and entered a new world in the middle of nowhere. What? The baby entered a new world in the middle of nowhere? Yes. And it was she was raised by new people. Chinese people. And called her Capella. Say, where did you come from in the middle of nowhere? In front of the car. <laughs> Playing with a toy. And, the, and they wonder, where is Ka Katie? Katie. And they called her a new name in Sonic's time. Cabela. And she grew up to be a young woman at that time. When baby greed was just a baby. Strange how the time works. Baby Cabela grew up faster than greed. But that was not supposed to happen that way. She might have went through time and grew up in that time. When Greed arrived on the planet. And when Eggman turned her into an animal and she turned back into a baby. Amazing. Okay. Anyway. The king, the Ke Kenshi struck the monster. Tried to fight the monster off. And the monster Ziff said, You can never destroy me. I will live on forever. The monsters tried to strike Kenji down, but she, Kenji gave him three shots. That's it. Three shots. You say, he only gets three shots to take him out? Well, did Kenji win? Did, did, he, did the monster do it? No. He used his first turn to scratch Kenji like death. The scratching death. The next attack send his monsters and at way all the way attacking at the last point and the final one was his powerful attack the giant dark ball attack and said take this Kenji you're die for this die forever and he did but it didn't make a scratch on him he dodged it he didn't see it so this is what the Kenji did. Held the baby Kenji's hand and said, let's do it together. Let's drive this monster back where he came from. So he, they did. They struck the monster directly and the monster couldn't move. He said, yeah, you can't catch me. And the monster couldn't move. Oh, but I cast a spell. Kenji, um, Jeff Road used a spell of the broken, shattered Chaos Emerald and placed a spell for him not to move. He couldn't do anything. All he can do is say, No! No! Ah, he got hit by the sword. And he cursed him of eternal sleep into someone who calls his name. And he, and he got struck and disappeared. Teleported to another world. To another galaxy site. The monster fell asleep. It seemed like it was over for the monster, but no. Someone out there in space found the monster and called his name and released him. Some remaining people of another galaxy survived, trying to return home and found the monster. And they said the name Ziff. And that's when he woke up and attacked and went to planet Earth to find the child. Well, in the castle ages. The child was sent to the Castle Ages time. It was supposed to be in Sonic's time, but it was not strong enough to get to that time, so it failed. Kenji was so huge, he turned into a hedgehog. Legend of Elder Kenji, Elder Giant Hedgehog, appeared before the king and said, You are the one supposed to protect him. The world is counting on you to bring the child to Sonic's time. Sonic will soon know what happened to this world, and he will stop him. Take the child to Sonic's time, and make sure that he makes it there. All hope it lies on him, or the world is finished. So the Elder, G Elder King Giant or Kenshi disappeared 
His spirit is in space. And he did go by his words. He took the baby to the planet, but failed to get into the right time. The king died by going through time. He turned to an old man just to get there. He died from old time wharf. His time was not meant to be in that time, so he died in an instant. But why did he die? He went so back, way back, that that messed his time wharf up. This is what happens when people are not a, when they're not asleep. They can simply turn old and die through time, through time. In this game, yes. In the story, yes. But the baby was fast asleep. He survived through time. So far for Gallius, he had a diaper change constantly because he didn't want to be in a kite chair. They put him to sleep. The machine did. Fell on Eggman's time and the Avatos and Metal Sonic found the baby and took him to the Avatos where Eggman will find him. He read the papers that he was special and Metal Sonic said, Special? Gives me a plan to hand him over to Eggman. So he did. Interesting how Gallius became apprentice to Eggman. A very special hedgehog. Amazing how it is. As for Cabela, living on a new home with a new family, she grew up older. But why did she grow older at that time? Mysterious, the time wharf messed her up. Shh, how time works. You're saying if she went if she teleported, why did she turn so old older to an adult? Well, the key was if Kenshi entered the spirit, used his spirit through time warp through space, he will absolutely die. It was meant for one thing, to teleport through time. So he did. He went through space with it. And it dropped on the bed where her, she was at. And she touched it and turned her into an adult there. Well, if the people took care of her, that is not a mystery. If the people found the baby in the streets, it was supposed to take effect as soon as she got there, placed in the people's arms, and found out that she grew older. Day after day, fast. She, she grew age after age until she turned 18 of the age and 18 months. The time warp stopped from there at 18. So that was 18 months. She tr turned old in every single month. Month. 30 days she turns an age. 18 months is 18 years old. Well, that gadget was something. But whatever happened to it, it's in Sonic's world somewhere. So greed actually got so the so the king actually died and the baby was transferred to the kingdom of the of Rohan's castle. The king has taken care of the baby and raised him to be his own. But not that long ago, the monster was on his trail. The monster turned himself into a person to finding the baby. And guess what happened? He found the baby in the bedroom. The king knew that was the creature because there was a message sent to him. The king raced upstairs. Codis raced, 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 raced all the way upstairs to the baby's room and tried to stop this monster and says I have the child and he stepped forward king he gets it the king couldn't allow him to kill the baby because he was supposed to be the hero of the galaxy next once of the next time so 
The king sacrificed his life to save the child. And the queen tried to get away from the people that called him a monster. That he was green, that he wasn't. It was just his hair. Greed was simply in trouble of of the castle ages. They called him a monster because his hair was green. That's how he was born like. At the memories of this moment, the, the people struck the queen and killed her and tried to hide it from the people hide the secret what happened to her so they say who's gonna be the next king well the monster became the king and tried to say hunt down the baby he's still alive well the king thought he had the baby destroyed that's when to call found the baby greed and said you are the one tried to make her squinches at talking to him but he didn't understand what she meant by all these things that could happen to me if I don't leave this world. He was simply not smart. He had no brain of learning. He couldn't even, he could talk at three. Kind of. But to call simply had no had hit her eyes all him because she they told her she needs to get him to the time of her time what a messed up time did he went through he was on the edge of dying but to call managed to get her out get him out of there the king the mo well greed Gre turned into a monster because her father and mother died and he said I smell the flesh of the monster destroyed my mom and di dad so he went to the castle and the ki and the soldiers said that was a monster why did greed turned into a monster well I told you about it it's that Wolverine thing that he turned into it's in there somewhere I forgot the name of it but I call it that. The spirit fox. Wolverine. This Wolverine spirit fox. That he turned into. It's called energy. Nothing but energy. He had the power to send so many monsters or people into another dimension. Of a demon realm. Of a doorway to the demon world. The spirit fox had a power like that. That can use against the enemy. And he did use it. He was about to open the door, but to call grabbed his back and said, to, "And the monster said, let go of me to call. They shall pay what they done." Time was running out. The moon was about to end. The child turned back. The monster turned back into a child, and cried, and to call's hands. She took the baby, to her time, and said, "Don't let her get away. She's the one who's done this to this." She, that baby will have its death. But the, ba the, the, the call said her final words to the monster. You might have this world. But sooner or later. The time will come before you're dead. I swear on my soul. Ziff. The world will be saved by him. And Sonic. And the rest of the heroes. Will finally put you down. For good. The call left the world as he has his face starting to melt back into the creature. The monster followed behind, tried to, but he couldn't. The sorcerers had him and put him to sleep. They knew he was the one who was supposed to destroy the world. So the sorceress and the leader, Sunny, cast a spell to put him to sleep. As as the call entered the time and went back through time, the baby fell right in the middle of the mystic ruins in front of Knuckles. The Master Emerald felt the power of the child and 
forged its power light against it and picked him up as he hosed the red chaos emerald and knuckles said who are you and what are you doing with a chaos emerald the baby flew to the sky well it was, he was he was carried he was being carried from the sky by the master emerald as the ritual was started the master emerald was creating chaos, baby chaos emeralds from its poured power it used all of its energy into its poured into its body creating the hard chaos emerald the strength of power the wield of energy the wield of healing the energy of sp speed blue and the others are forged to keep his body flourished He turned into an animal in front of everyone. After the ritual was over, there was still something in him, the star. This was left behind his heart as it gave its final energy, the Master Emerald did. He turned into a baby hedgehog with the f seven chaos emeralds in him. Like I said, the blue one, speed. The green one, healing. The other one, the red one, well, heart of power. And the others, the purple one, the dreams and power of his brains. The white one, playful, to keep his, keep him happy, and joyful. The yellow one, the closest, the light, the keeping the darkness out. And the others, the keeping his body flourished, and healthy, and fed. And the shoes were gifted by the by the son of, sh and the shoes were gifted from another time of tales. The old tales has given the shoes to him. And he has become Greed, the hedgehog. The slowest hedgehog for a baby, the fastest flyer in the skies. Well, unlimited flying, but not too high, that is. And as the baby was granted to call, told Sonic. Would you take this baby and protect with all your power? Would you be the chosen one to be his guardian? Sonic took his word and took his to call's word. I will protect him. As he became fused with the new baby Chaos Emeralds. Once you take this word, Sonic, you cannot turn back. So he did, and he didn't turn back. And the beginning started with Sonic and Baby Greed. The new horizon of Baby Greed and Sonic. From here on, Sonic will have to take care of him through another story. And they became just wonderful pals. And will they ever find will she ever find will he ever find to call, will he ever find her sister Anne? Cabela. Well, he did when he grew up. She turned back into a baby and became his new friend. It was Eggman who did that. Thank you for listening. That was a long story, wasn't it? A two hour. Remember what I say, people. I hope this one made sense to you how it all began and how he became how did he get to the world of Sonic's time there you have it I told you but there's more to the story that meets the eye but this isn't this is plenty this is plenty enough to field a great game plenty this is all you need to know about him 
I might tell more how Sonic died against him. Thank you for listening for the beginning. Till next time on another chapter. Before we go, let me start something. I'm about to act about part, so you guys will see it. Oh, and about the chobo. You are my son. A great powerful child that lives in this crate. I will get you safely away from this creature. I promise you will be safely with a new friend. He will protect you with all his might, so you'll be ready to take him on. We are all with you, Greed the Hedgehog. You are the child of time. Time is on an essence with you. May time find the right way for you to live. There is only one last time for you to live. If this time fails, there is nothing left we can do but die of the ends of time. Sadrus. Unirus. Kekia. We all die to get him there. All rest on him and Sonic, the Hedgehog.